All right, so we're back in the world of Space Marines 2, and I've been playing a pretty broken sniper build that I think a lot of sniper players may want to consider taking a look at. The build I'm playing has some pretty amazing benefits, like being able to stealth when you need it, which is fairly consistent during the entire combat phase, while also having pretty insane damage numbers topping the charge by quite a large margin every time you jump into a round. And believe it or not, we actually have unlimited ammo. Yeah, I actually discovered a way to have unlimited ammo so you don't even have to worry about picking up ammo boxes or anything is pretty insane but anyways let's dive right on into the build all right let's talk about how this build works you're basically going to use any sniper that you desire we're going to have a section breaking down the sniper that i use but basically the adamant restoration perk is really really weird in the way that it works basically whenever you drop below 30 percent hp you get 25 percent of your maximum reserved ammo and the thing is it typically has a cooldown but when you swap between the weapons i don't think it's like reading that you have swapped a weapon so the cooldown instantly refreshes so basically, if you have less than 30% HP, you swap between your pistol and go back to your sniper, you actually get ammo freely. This is how we're maintaining having unlimited ammo. You can do this with any of the snipers. It's really easy to do. If you don't want to play with a low life based build, which it can be scary if you're not familiar with how to play it, you don't necessarily need this, but otherwise it is really, really powerful. If you want to use it, you have that option available to you. Otherwise, how the build is played is pretty simple. You're going to go into a mission, Whenever you are in like a horde situation, you typically want to hang far in the back and snipe, go into your stealth, immediately shoot out of it and aim at heads. This is going to refresh your stealth. And then after you do that, you can just keep doing that, shooting at enemy's targets while constantly de-aggroing them since you'll be invisible. With the way the build is designed, you're going to be constantly de-aggroing and then you're going to have a fade time where you can actually freely shoot for extended periods of time. And enemies just simply can't even target you because you're just going invisible all the time. So now that you understand how to maintain the low life, let's go over the perks of the character so you guys know how to build it. So under the first core, we're going to be getting block break. When you shoot a blocking enemy or shield enemy, it will deal 25% of the normal range damage. This is going to be good against those pesky enemies that like to put their claws up and defend themselves or the shielders. Very simple one and it's pretty much the best in this role. There's really nothing else you can get. In the second core row, we're going to be picking up Vantage Point. Remaining stationary for 2 seconds increase your primary weapon damage by 20%. This is a whopping damage increase and all you have to do is stand still for 2 seconds. Generally speaking, you should be positioned in the far, far back. And this is going to be really good for it and you're going to be constantly de-aggroing by going stealth. So it works fine. Finally, under the final core row, we're going to be picking up lethal efficiency. Killing more than one enemy with one shot from the lost fuel soul restores its one char well, charge by one. As you see plenty of times in the footage, I'm killing enemies and cleaving them with the shot because we have a lot of radius and this keeps to like help maintain the high ammo where even if you don't go with the low life style build, you can still have pretty good ammo sustain. Under team pack, we're going to be picking up squad renewal. A headshot kill restores ability charge by 10% for any squad member. And this is gonna pretty much help with the ability charge of things. You're gonna be headshotting and killing things very easy. So this is gonna help a lot. Alternatively, you can pick up something like the marksmanship if you just want raw damage. Next, under gear, we're gonna be grabbing renewal. What this does is a headshot kill restores camel cloak charge by 5%. This is how we're maintaining being able to pretty much keep our uh, cloak charged. Um, the thing is, we're not using cloak to move around. We're using cloak to proc the damage from our next perk and that's it. So when we're about to enter into a fight, we cloak, we shoot instantly. We're hitting headshots. When we hit headshots, we get pretty much a massive like damage increase and we get our charge back. That's pretty much it. And then, as I just said, we're going to be using targeted shot because the first range attack that breaks the camo deals 75% more damage. So this is that combination that I'm talking about where you get a ton of damage. For the final perk under gear, we're going to be getting lingering concealment. After performing an attack that breaks camo cloak, you remain hidden for two seconds. The purpose of this is to basically make it so that we can continue to shoot after our first initial shot because by the time we actually get the next like two or three shots out, only then will our camo break. And this gives us plenty of time to shoot at heads because you don't get aggro during this phase and you can continue to shoot heads and help to charge up your camo so you can go back into your camo mode. Finally, under our signature, we're gonna be getting evasion. After a perfectly timed dodge, camo cloak automatically activates 
without spinning a charge for five seconds. This is pretty self-explanatory. Whenever something tries to hit at you, you can just dodge out of the way and it gives you the concealment. When you conceal, you still get the same benefits of the 75% increased damage, or it just keeps you safe, which is really important. Alternatively, you will lose a massive amount of damage if you go this, but if you are like not as careful as me, you can go emergency override. This is going to pretty much make it so you don't die when you get lethal damage and it'll give you like a cloak to help you. It has a very long cooldown, but if you want to be safe, you can go this, but you actually do lose a ton of damage because the uptime of this is really high, 15 seconds, and you can just dodge and get a massive headshot hit. So definitely worth going in my opinion. For our weapon, we're getting the Ophelian Liberation Alpha. This beast of a gun has 15 firepower and 12 rounds. The reason we're getting this is because it just does a ton of damage, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can pick whatever you want in the grand scheme of things. It don't really matter too much because ammo sustain is fine with this, so you don't need it. Under the perk trees, we're going the full bottom row. Everything in the bottom row is very important. Increased capacity on the first one gives us more reserve ammo. This one is, we just talked about this not a second, like not too long ago. This is how we're maintaining our uh, low life and getting us unlimited ammo. The swap between your primary and your secondary when you're under 30%. And you will constantly get your ammo and you'll have literally unlimited ammo. We're going to get amplification. This is going to help us kill things in the AoE so we can proc our thing that gives us more ammo. Um, we're going to get another amplification for that same reason and then we're going to get greater mic damage increased by 10% against terminus enemies And then ideally I would actually get amplification again here Just to guarantee that we get that huge AOE splash so we can kill things You're going to pick up brutal rampage for three after killing three or more enemies with one shot You'll deal 25% more damage keep in mind again all the footage that you're seeing does not have this perk meaning you'll get significantly more damage than you're seeing on top of your unlimited ammo. We're going to get increased capacity once again for more reserve. And then ideally, in my opinion, I would actually start in with perpetual velocity just so the shots fire faster with your weapon. Now onto our secondary. And as I say in pretty much every video, the secondary really doesn't matter that much. But if I had to pick something, it would be the Affiliate Liberation Alpha. This would be your best option. I'm currently still using the Dragos Reclamation, but this is what I would pick up. Under the perk tree, we're pretty much getting everything at the bottom. We're going to be dodging, so this is why we're getting everything at the bottom and you get some synergies from it. We're going to be picking up Great Might. This is increasing our damage against Terminus enemies by 10%. We're going to be getting this one, Retaliation, and this is actually the reason why I'm even going this like bottom part. After a perfectly timed dodge, you deal 25% more damage for 5 seconds gonna give you more damage so it's probably worth it we're gonna get iron grip after a gun strike recoil is reduced by 35 percent not really that important uh divine might another 10 percent increased damage extended mag more magazine so you're gonna be able to shoot a lot and ideally you actually want to avoid rapid health because we don't want to be in a situation until like where we're getting our health back because that would actually be pretty bad for the build if something get patched maybe consider getting the bottom row but in my opinion, actually grabbing this is not very good for you. So try to avoid it and just kind of go around it. You'll be pretty much good to go here. For our knife, we're going to be getting the Affiliate Liberation Beta. The reason why we got this is because it has a ton of strength. And typically, I like fencing based weapons. But seeing that we want to dodge, I don't care too much about like parrying. So we went with a block based weapon. Under our perk tree, there's actually one really important perk, but we're going to go over it. We're going to get perpetual strength, more melee damage. We're going to be getting uh, kinetic energy. Each consecutive heavy hit increases heavy attack melee damage by 3% up to 30%. So you can actually deal some reasonable melee damage. We're going to be getting perpetual strength again for more melee damage. And this is actually the biggest thing in the melee and is actually pretty important to the build. Just replace distance stab with shoulder bash while evade or sprinting. Tap the attack button to quickly perform an area effect forward attack. Now you probably saw in some of the footage that I, whenever I do melee, I'll be able to pretty much like slide in and do this huge AOE attack and push things back and I can actually shoot them with the pistol. This is one of the few ways you're going to be able to deal with AOE pressure on you because the sniper generally doesn't have the greatest AOE like damage or AOE clear. Yeah, the loss can like do some area damage, but when things get in your face, it's not as easy. And this is going to help you a ton with like clearing out the, the wave. So this is really important. Next, we're going to get Tyranid Slayer for the 10% increased damage against Tyranid. You're going to get Reeling Blow. Enemies hit with Whirlwind Slash deals 30% less damage and this will help you with defense. Extremist Slayer, melee damage against extremist level enemies is increased. And then finally, you're going to get Killstreak. 
After killing 10 enemies in rapid succession with a light combo, you do not lose control upon taking heavy hits. You cannot be knocked back for 5 seconds. Not that important to the build, but most, most thing that's important here is just getting shoulder bash for your AoE clear. And there you have it guys, that is my Shadow Stalker Sniper build. I had a real good time playing this build once we got everything online, and the Sniper feels like a very, very strong class. Definitely something you want to have if you have a good, strong, like, bulwark frontlining. And man, I am a massive fan of this class. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the build, some improvements you would like to make. And also let me know what class you would like to see next. I'm going to probably pretty much cover all of them and make multiple builds. But let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm thinking maybe heavy. If the video helped you out, consider leaving me a like because that helps me out quite a bit. And subscribe for more Space Marines 2 content. And I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. <laughs>